So, uh, basically, some introduction to this uh, presentation. Uh, so, uh, on a plus plus version six uh, includes the redesign analysis tool, and uh, it makes heavy use of Python, and this makes it more flexible and extendable and suitable for more use cases. Um, and uh, well, this was um, the topic of several uh, summits in the previous years, but uh, I'll I'll just uh, briefly uh, describe uh, it uh, because um, for for context. Um, so basically, there is going to be two parts. Uh, for this presentation, I I'll uh, I'll show some 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 stuff that uh, can be done with it, and um, with examples from the existing showcases. And Attila, if he gets there, uh, will um, will show how the the chart tool can be used. Uh, without the IDE, so from uh, Python scripts or command line. Uh, so may maybe some of these uh, you are familiar with, but uh, I'll just uh, just quickly tell. So, so in the new analysis tool, um, we still have the, the uh, analysis files or n files, um, which still have charts. I, uh, I share my screen. Yeah, so, uh, but now uh, each chart is a Python script and the script controls uh, querying results and manipulating data and, uh, and plotting. Uh, so let's see a chart. So the charts have a chart properties dialog, this uh, configure chart window, and it can set uh, Various settings, uh, lots of settings, and um, and and these values are read from the Python script, um, and uh, what one thing I want to talk about is chart templates. So basically, each chart is an instantiation of a chart template. Uh, here are the list of available uh, chart templates. Uh, these are the, the built-in ones. Uh, these are for general use cases, but um, for um, more specific use cases, uh, one can define their own chart templates, and I'll show you a bit later how. Um, and basically, we have two types of charts. One is using the IDE's native plot widget to display charts. The other is using matplotlib, and uh, the native one is... Uh, is, is a bit faster and um, more scalable. Uh, the matplotlib one is um, more customizable. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention if uh, if you have questions, then please interrupt whenever, anytime. Um, one thing we can do is use uh, Python variables in scripts. Like, for example, here's a... Uh, so this chart is uh, is from the power consumption showcase. Uh, we plot the power levels of all hosts during the course of the simulation. Uh, this is very crowded. We can uh, we can uh, select a host and and plot that. For example, here's this chart. Now here the uh, host number is basically hardwired in the into the filter expression like this. So we host uh, we choose host ten. But we can make this a variable. Here's this chart host x here. Um, yeah, basically there's this edit chart script button which uh, opens the the chart script. Uh, I forgot to mention it before. Uh, so here we make this host uh, Python variable and take the filter expression from the uh, dialog to the script itself and uh, 
and we have the uh, sorry so we have the host inserted uh, so the uh, the host is chosen automatically so if I like, I write this to host 14 then it changes we can also add the host number to the title here um, and we can also add this uh, host choosing mechanism to these chart dialog pages uh, so uh, there is this edit dialog pages button and uh, so basically these dialog pages are defined in xswt format which is a description language um and uh the documentation is, awa is, is available online uh but uh for practical purposes it's uh it, it's it's easy to uh to select parts and uh copy and paste them and uh and modify them uh i could create a new uh new page for this post selection but i can also edit like maybe here somewhere in the input page so i can uh i can copy this part and rewrite this and each of them have an, have an id which need to be unique so let's call this host uh this is important because we can refer to to uh refer to these elements from the script by the id so so there's a host selection dialog now let's say i want to select host 16. also we have to get the host from the dialog so you can say uh you want the host yeah and now it changes to 16. um Let's say that this is a very useful change uh, to the dialog pages, and we want to save this as a chart template to use in other charts. We can do that. Uh, if we right click, there is a save as template. Uh, it asks for a file name, and the custom templates are saved in the uh, in the project uh, chart templates directory, uh, basically the pro the that properties file describes the uh, chart template uh, like uh, its ID, its uh, name, for example, uh, and the uh, dialog pages. Uh, each dialog page is an XSWT file. They are here, and there's a py file which contains the the chart script uh and and now i think i need to reopen this amp file and it's going to be available the host x yeah uh and we can use it um another thing we can do is to uh to refactor uh some code to external Python files. Um, this can be useful if uh, if there is some code which is used in multiple charts. So, for example, we we can refactor this uh, this filter expression line. So I just copy this and create a new file. Let's call this filter.py and you can add the function like get filter expression. The host is a, an argument, and just paste it here and say return this. And now back to the chart, we can import this uh, this file as a Python module and uh and instead of the filter expression can use this function so 
say filter dot get uh, filter expression host. And we got oh, 016 just as before. Now, um, so if there's a, an external Python file in the same directory as where the AMP file is, then it, it's uh, available from that AMP file. But uh, we can also put it to the uh, uh, projects, uh, the Python projects Python directory, which is uh, included in the, in the Python path. So uh, then it becomes usable from any chart anywhere. Um, I mean, any AMP file. Um, another thing I want to show is uh, vector operations. Uh, so if I right click, here's the uh, here are the vector operations which are available. Uh, these are the built-in vector operations. Uh, one of the useful ones, for example, are divide by constant and multiply by constant, uh, which can be used to get the results in better units. For example, here the data rate is in uh, bits per second, and it's in the order of a million. So if I uh, divide by a million and apply this, then uh, I can get the data rate in Mbps. Uh, the same thing can be used on the x-axis. It's called time dilation. Uh, so for example, uh, here is a chart where, so the time in the x-axis would be, would look better in milliseconds. So I can apply a time dilation of uh, 1,000 to get it in milliseconds. Um, now the the default vector operations are defined in the vector ops.py file, which is in the omnet uh, directory's Python folder. It's, uh, it's it's basically very easy to find. Um, it it has the uh, so so it has the definitions of the vector operations uh, and also a description of how to create uh, a custom vector operation. Um, here's an example. So basically, I can copy this, and I can put it in an external Python file, for example, like this one, which uh, I just created uh, before. And, and this vector operation will be available uh, in, in this M file. I guess uh, maybe I have to restart this, but uh, uh, close the end file and restart, and it's going to be available. <laughs> um, next thing that can be useful is uh, adding external data to charts. Um, for example, here is the throughput showcase where we uh, so we basically mix simulated data, so simulation results and uh, external data, which which are here is analytical results. So we simulate uh, basically the throughput uh, at different packet sizes, uh, at different Wi-Fi bit rates, and we can compare them with the with the theoretical analytical values. And how we do that is, um, so the basic idea is to, so we can add the the data to the chart, to the chart script, and, uh, and the basic idea is to, uh, to put this data into a data frame with the same structure as uh, the simulated results are already in. Um, it's a good idea to write print statements in the uh, script. So we can see in the console how the uh, data frames look like. Uh, sorry, man, this is not 
this is the chart I want to show. Uh, yes, so um, so basically, uh, we can print the uh, data frame, which contains the simulated results. I added a, a type column to uh, differentiate from the analytical ones and uh, and we just have to create uh, the same data frame structure for these uh, values and this is going to be in pfn and if I print this so yeah it has the same structure only the type is analytical we can then merge the two data frames which is here it's concatenated can print the merge one as well and uh, now this can be plotted and we have the chart um, also it's possible to uh, Where's that to uh, to add uh, statements like this to the code? So we can save any data frame to CSV or load it from CSV. So if it happens that this data is not so short, then it can be in an an uh, external CSV file. Um, and now I want to show a not so trivial use case and it's a bit advanced a bit more advanced um so basically this is the original chart in the showcase it's um uh it's a wireless scenario uh there are two hosts and they are sending messages and uh, to each other and we increase the transmission power um so that's the iteration variable, and we we check the throughput against the the uh, transmission power. Now we want to actually uh, plot the throughput against the the SNR, which is the single single to noise interference ratio. So the problem is uh, both this requires uh, two statistics. So throughput is a statistic, which is uh, throughput against uh, transmission power and sneer is another statistic which is sneer against transmission power uh but we don't need the transmission power part so how we can do it is we need two filter expressions to select these two test statistics uh then we can uh, create two data frames and uh oh, sorry and uh show how it looks like so these are the two data frames it's basically all the data just uh uh dumped in there and we have to pivot it so it's in a it's in a better shape to be plotted i think it's uh oh sorry uh this is the this is the chart so we pivot uh we select the transmission power as the index and the experiment is the columns and after that looks like this so basically these two data frames uh contain the data that we want to plot against each other and we can tell matplotlib to do that so take the x values from df sneer the y values from the S dftp and we can tell it to uh, get the labels from the column names in df sneer or dftp because they are they're the same column names so and uh yeah and then, then we have the chart it's uh of course it can be made to look prettier but uh, the data is there uh so i think uh i think i uh 
I, I finish here. So, and do you have any questions before we move on to part two? Thanks for the presentation so far. I have one question. Once you plot your data, uh, can you export what you see in a different format like PNG or I don't know, JPG? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a uh, th there is built-in support for that. So there is in the uh, there is an export dialog mm -hmm. page where you can uh, just write a file name like what is this? Here, and it's going to be PNG, and you can customize the size, and then you can say uh, like export charts, and and it mm -hmm. uh, it exports. Now there is also you can also do stuff like right click and copy image to clipboard or save image. Uh, I think the same image. Uh, as svg by default but i think if i'm not mistaken both can do png or svg yeah yeah nice and, and one other question at some point earlier um you were playing with something and you had one graph like this one and uh, and then it appeared a stack of graphs so its line was in a different chart uh how, how can you do it to to plot uh, each line in a different chart, or, or maybe create a grid of charts. Uh, you, you mean uh, you mean the, uh, um, the 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 values were different. So uh, I, I think there was this other chart, which is the original, and uh, this is what I created from scratch, which just contains the basic stuff that I want to show. Uh, are these the two you you mentioned? uh i think it was a different one but different one but the, the question is like um is it easy to make a grid of charts like oh. i don't want all these lines to be in the same chart let's make um, a yeah. four by four yeah 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 i i, I know now uh, this is the one yeah exactly yeah yeah th there is now this is a built-in chart template it's uh it's called like let's select some vectors it's called uh uh plot using line chart on a separate axis with matplotlib okay. so it, it basically uh you can select any number of statistics and uh and plot it uh each is going to be plotted in in a different subplot but also if this is not enough uh you can do this manually um i think i have a uh maybe here yeah, th this is an example. So this mm -hmm. is uh, uh, basically uh, it contains two subplots. Uh, the first one contains two statistics and the second one as well. And uh, uh, in short, it's uh, we get two filter expressions and two data frames and plot each data frame in a different subplot. Uh, which is here, so it's a it's a matplotlib's uh, subplot function, basically. Okay. So you can do anything um, or in, um, organize it any way you want, and create a chart template from it if if it's uh, useful. So it's possible, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So if no more questions. Then we can get to part two, I think. Okay. Uh, yes, we have uh, five more minutes in the time slot, but uh, 20 minutes until the next presentation starts or next time slot. So I will take over now. And uh, what I would like to show you is how to deal with uh, these uh, M files and with analysis and results and charts without the ID. So uh, I'm right now here in one of the sample projects of Omnet PP, the, the result files project. And uh, I have an analysis file here called uh, fifo.onf and to run one of the charts within that file, I can uh, run the uh, chart tool file uh, program of Omnet PP. 
and if I click the run it, I get a summary of what's in this analysis file. Uh, these are the input file patterns, and there are three charts. Uh, I can also run one of the charts by choosing the run uh, command and pick by name. For example, I can also pick my index. You lang matches on um, substring. So this is basically the same thing that you would see within the IDE, but in a command line, to uh, with a command line tool. Uh, the chart tool also has other uh, commands like image export and data export. So if, instead of uh, running the chart, one of the parts, I can uh, invoke the image export command. And if I'm not selecting any of the charts, then it simply exports all of the charts one by one. I can. So one of them looks like this, and all, all the others are there. This is useful if you want to quickly export all of the uh, charts for your uh, publication or, or for any kinds of usage uh, easily from the command line uh, in, in automation uh, scenario even. The other uh, useful uh, thing that is possible is to deal with uh, analysis files, uh, analyses and charts and results from a Python script. I'm going to use an interpreter here, a repo. And uh, I can also load this analysis file uh, by importing the uh, analysis uh, module from MIPP.scape. And I'm also still within the same result file uh, project. And I can use the load on file uh, function to load the same on file, save it to a variable or n. And uh, on this, now I have an analysis object here, and I can do a couple of things with it. I can export image, uh, run chart, so on and so forth. Uh, I can, for example, run a chart. This needs a chart object, uh, the working directory to use. This is typically the location of the M file and the workspace object. The others are uh, optional. So to run a chart, I first have to get hold of it. So from the analysis, I can collect the charts, select one of them, like the first one, then uh, add set the working directory as the current working directory. And a diverse space object, uh, uh, it encompasses the, the workspace abstraction of Eclipse outside of Eclipse. So I, was, I have to create one such object. And the workspace is the samples folder. So I have to set the workspace as the parent of this folder. Of course, I first have to import the OS module because I'm using the get CVD function. And now uh, nothing happened because the show is not implicit. But if I also import the PyPlot module of Matplotlib and call show, I could also uh, call uh, save feed, for example, if I don't want it to pop up on the screen but save it into a file, then I I'm can also do the, like the same thing. Now to uh, get one level deeper and uh, not be that. And uh, uh, other than the on files, deal with raw results, results and and uh, plot them manually. I can also use the results uh, module. And also the this module because that will be useful later. So, it's within the results module, I can do something like uh, load result files, uh, read, sorry, read result files. And I can pass in the same kind of uh, input file patterns as in the IDE. And it uh, returns nothing that's interesting. So let's just uh, instead load 
what inputs to the um, this trigger work might be, but the demo effect that way. So instead, let's add some inputs as if they were uh, added uh, within the IDE to the input section of the M file. And now I should be able to use the same API as within the chart tool. For example, get vectors. Yes, I can also filter them like I also want the ones that start with Q. Now I get fewer vectors and store them. Uh, I could plot them manually by using the user matplotlib functions and select the the two columns where the x and y coordinates are. That's vec time and vec value. So vex Like first one, and this is the this is a pandas data frame by the way. So if you are familiar with that, then this will be familiar. And I have a simple uh, line chart with no not no additional. Uh, Formatting because uh, I haven't touched the chart object or any of the visual properties. This is just a single, single line from the loaded vector data. And I can also use the plot vectors uh, function from the utils uh, module. And this one also takes a set of vector properties, which I'm also omitting here. So this will also not look very pretty, but the data is there. So this uh, uh, basically abstracts away the, the accessing of the data and, and plots each row as a separate line. And if I provided any graphical properties, then those would also take effect. Um, I think that's mostly it from me. And we're also uh, out of time mostly, but uh, we still have time for a few questions, if there is any. No, I'm not hearing any questions. So I believe we are five minutes past schedule and the next slot starts in 10 minutes. We can stay here for a while longer if you want 